So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be talking about power series representations of functions. So let's start with something that we already know. So as an example, whenever the absolute value of x is less than 1, the function 1 over 1 minus x is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on which is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x sub n. So this is a power series representation of the function 1 over 1 minus x when the absolute value of x is less than 1. So it's a representation whose radius of convergence is 1. So we can actually use this to come up with a number of other representations. So for example, let's say we take 1 over 1 minus 2x. Well, to get the representation for this, we can substitute 2x for x in the series for this. So 1 over 1 minus 2x is just 1 plus 2x plus 4x squared plus 8x cubed and so on. In other words, it's the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the n times x to the n. Now here we, here we needed the absolute value of x to be less than 1. So whatever this thing, whatever was being subtracted, had to have an absolute value of x less than 1. Here what's being subtracted is 2x. So this is true when the absolute value of 2x is less than 1. In other words, when the absolute value of x is less than 1 half. So again, we have a power series representation of this function that holds on the interval negative 1 half to 1 half. Let's look at one more example. So this one will come up again in a moment. 1 over 1 plus x squared. So what can we do with this? Well, we want to apply the previous idea, this geometric, basically a geometric series, 1 over 1 minus x, uh, geometric series representation, to something like this. But here we're adding. We're adding x squared. We're not subtracting x squared. So let's start by writing this as 1 minus negative x squared. And now, with negative x squared being the thing that we're subtracting, we can apply the same idea. So this is 1 plus the thing we're subtracting, negative x squared, plus the thing we're subtracting squared, so negative x squared quantity squared, plus the thing we're subtracting cubed, and so on. So you can rewrite this as a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, because each of the, this one is positive, this one is negative, this one, it's negative x squared quantity squared, so this negative disappears. Here, it's negative cubed, so it stays, it's going to be negative. So we get negative 1 to the n times x raised to even powers. So here, x is raised to the power of 0. Here, 2, 4, 6, and so on. So we have a power series representation of 1 over 1 plus x squared, which holds true when the absolute value of x squared, actually the absolute value of negative x squared, let's be really thorough here, is less than 1. But this is true precisely when the absolute value of x itself is less than 1. So this has the same radius of convergence as uh, the first example, but now we've int introduced this alternating term. And again, this will, we'll come back to this in a moment. So before we come back to that example, I want to talk about a theorem. And this says that if we define a function f to be represented by this power series, n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, x minus a to the n, and if this thing has a radius of convergence,
of r, and r is greater than 0, it's not equal to 0, which would be trivial, and it converges only when x equals a. So it has a positive radius of convergence. Then f of x is differentiable. on the interval a minus r, a plus r, and the derivative is just what we want it to be. So f prime of x, let's write this also d by dx, of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, x minus a to the n. Well, the derivative of a sum we know is the sum of derivatives. Here we're saying the derivative of an infinite sum is the infinite sum of the derivatives. And we know how to take the derivatives of each of these terms because each of these terms is just a polynomial. Um, so this is true and this series this resulting series, the derivative uh, also has the radius of convergence of r. Now we're not saying that the interval of convergence of this series is the same as the interval of convergence of this series, but we are saying that the radii of convergence of these two things is, well, I guess I can't say radii if it's one, the radius of convergence of the original function and of the derivative uh, is the same. So let's use this uh, to find an infinite series representation of arctangent. Well, first, actually, let's, let's look at one consequence. Consequence is that if we differentiate term by term to get a derivative, we also anti-differentiate term by term. So the antiderivative of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, x minus a to the n, is the sum of the, of the antiderivatives of individual terms. So it's c plus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n times x minus a to the n plus 1, all over n plus 1. So, as an example, let's look at arctangent. So arctangent, we know, is an antiderivative of 1 plus x squared. So I'm being a little bit, I'm being a little bit inaccurate. I'm writing arctangent of x equals the indefinite integral. And in reality, the indefinite integral is a family of antiderivatives. But we'll ignore that for the moment. So this is the antiderivative well, of an infinite series. We know the infinite series representation of this. It's 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus x to the sixth and so on. We anti-differentiate this thing term by term. So we get x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 minus x to the seventh over 7 plus and so on plus c. So this equals the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1 because we only have odd exponents, 1, 3, 5, 7, all over 2n plus 1. And I guess we really should add plus c afterward. Now this is true for any value of x within the radius of convergence of this series. If we differentiate, we don't change the radius of convergence. If we anti-differentiate, we don't change the radius of convergence. This thing had a radius of convergence of 1, which means that our infinite series, our power series representation of arctangent of x, also has a radius of convergence of 1. So this is true for all x in the interval from negative 1 to 1.
And again, we are not saying what happens at negative 1 or 1. All we're saying is that the radius of convergence is 1, so we know that it converges for all values in this open interval.